A few days ago, Christine asked a very interesting question in the Goodly Insider community. And the question was about data cleaning. Now I did solve that problem, but I also wanted to test the problem against an AI model, whether the AI can solve the problem just like the way that I did. I'm going to talk about the solution in three parts. Part number one is going to be an AI solution, which is kind of okay, but not that great. Part number two is a better AI solution because I improved my prompt. And part number three is going to be my solution. And that's where you learn the most, not because my solution solution is kind of great, but I'll give you a logical understanding of the problem and the way that I think about approaching the problem. And once you truly understand the problem and the different options there are in Power Query, you will start to think about problems in a different way. Now, I've also prepared a downloadable kit of the entire problem solution, my prompts with the AI, and all of that is available for the download in the link below. And you can take a look at that. With all that said, let's start go compete with an AI. I'm assuming myself to be a no voice at this stage where I don't really have the thorough understanding of Power Query or the data. I'm just trying to look at some data and trying to figure it out with the help of AI. That's our stage number one. All right, so in Excel, I have got this page called source and on which I have some data. I can clearly see that I have uh, two columns here at the start, P code and country. And then there are pairs of two, which is uh, month one forecast and the amount, month two forecast and the amount, month three forecast and the amount and so on and so forth. And this data needs to be transformed into an output like this, which is where we have the code and the country once again, and the date of the forecast and the value of the forecast. Now, that's all the understanding that I have. Let's just see that if I just give a very rudimentary prompt to the AI that here is the data, here is the expected output. Can you do that? Let's just see if it works or not. All right, the AI model has given us some output. Let's just take a look at the output and I will try to come back to my senses and shorten this slightly so that I don't lose the essence of what this solution is and still try to be able to make a slightly better query. So it's saying that load the data and it's saying, hey, reference the query four times, pick up the four columns, then you rename the columns, pick up the next four columns, rename the columns, so on and so forth. And then finally, you just append all the queries. Let's just see that if I were to take all of that and implement that in Power Query, how would that look like? All right, we start obviously with the AI solution number one, which is where from the source, which is nothing but my connection to the Excel file where I've got the data from, I have kept the first four columns, which is the P code country M1 forecast and the M1 amount. That's what is happening in step number one. And that's the thing which is done. And all the other columns are removed right here. And then what I do is I rename the forecast column and the amount column to let's say date and the amount. Then what I do was I go back to the source and then I keep the P code, the country, and then the month two and the forecast for that. So the month two date and the forecast for that, which is technically step number two. So that's done. And then we rename these two as date and amount. And similarly, I do that for the third one, then do the rename then I do that for the fourth one, and then I do the rename. Now, what we have been able to get is four similar looking tables at the rename step. So here is a similar looking table, which has got the same names, same names, same names, and same names. And then in the last step, I have just combined it. Now, when I was taking a look at the solution in Power Query suggested by Gemini, obviously the solution was slightly broken into multiple queries. I have just consolidated that into a single query, but the essence of the solution remains absolutely the same, no change whatsoever. So now the data has been combined, P code, country, date, and amount. And here is a change type and we're good to go. At this stage, I bring my analytical brain inside and I ask myself that at the moment, if I take a look at the data, there are four forecasts and four dates. So month one forecast and the amount, month two forecast and the amount, three and the amount and four and the amount, obviously. But this solution is not scalable because after four, we just combine the four ones right here. If there were five months or six months of forecasts coming in later, this solution will obviously not scale. And that's where my solution breaks. So let's move on to stage number two, where we improve our prompt and give AI another prompt for scalability. In stage number two, I go prompt the Gemini model and I say that, hey, in case more once were added, the solution is unscalable. Can you try to make it more scalable instead? And it does some work and gives us the output. Let's just go test against that output. Now you can obviously see it has given all of these steps and it has also given us this particular M code, which I can actually copy this particular M code, change the table name right here, and we can stick it inside of our Power Query and see if that works or not. So I've got this code inside of Power Query and all the steps are just appearing right here. I actually pasted the code in the advanced editor. And what I did was that I just changed the name from table one to just source. That's all that I have done. That's it. Now let's just go take a look at what the LLM model has done to make it more scalable where we are not limited to having four months of dates and four months of forecasts. Let's just see. So first of all, it's actually unpivoting the data. So it's keeping the first two columns and unpivoting the data. 
So we have P code country and we have attribute and we have the value. Now this is not quite what we want, but that's what we have. So all the forecast months have come into rows. So forecast date and amount, date amount, date and amount, so on and so forth. They've all come into rows. Then it says identify the type. It has created this new column right here. And if you just maybe read through this, it identifies the attribute is a date or not. It simply says that, hey, let me just take a look at this particular title and does it contain a date or not? If it contains the date, it writes the word date. If it doesn't contain the date, it writes the word value. That's all that it does. Then it extracts the prefix, which is something on the right here. That means extracting all of these M1, M2 kind of values. Then it removed the attribute. That means it just deleted that particular column, which was right here. And then it pivoted the data. That means these will actually become columns. So there is going to be a date column and a value column. These are going to become the columns of the data. That's what the pivoting means. So if you now take a look, date and value have actually become the columns and the prefix have just come right here, which appears to be right at the moment. And then this is the final result and it removed an extra column, changed the type and this is the output. Now at this stage, you might be pretty happy with the output, but there are still some nuances which I'd like to point out and still at some places, there are some manual things which I'd like to completely omit. For instance, pivoting is not typically good. Unpivoting is fine, but pivoting is not particularly good if your data size are larger, pivoting takes time and it breaks the streaming of the query. So if you now take a look at this particular step, which is identify the type, it is actually taking a look at this particular column and hard coding and trying to find the date or not. But if you have any other column, this would tend not to work that well. So we want to get rid of all of these inconsistencies in a way that the query truly scales and we have as limited number of manual inputs as required for this data to be in the shape that I want it to be. Now comes my solution. And the point is not that my solution is superior, but the point is that you will develop a very good understanding of how to approach data cleaning solutions in a relatively sophisticated way. Let's start. While talking about my solution, I would like to give you an understanding of the approach that I'm trying to build first. Once you understand the approach, hopefully you will understand the solution as well. And obviously I'll use the M language that you and I are both fan of. So let's just start. So if you take a look at the particular data, I want to hard code as less as possible without being dependent on the names of the columns for example, date, which my AI solution was technically dependent on. It was taking a look at the date column and then doing some if based work. Now, if I just actually squeeze down the data to just two or three rows, I'll be able to explain you better. So I'm just going to go ahead from row number four onwards and all through the end, I will just hide the rows for just a quick second, assuming that they were just two rows of the data and the multiple columns are just as the way they are. Now, how would I want this data to be transformed? If you think about it, I want the first four columns because these are relevant. So P code, country, M1 forecast and M1 amount, then I want the M2 forecast and the M2 amount to come underneath that like appended below. And these two are just going to be repeated once again, right here. Then I want these two or all of the countries to be repeated once again, right here. And the next bucket of the two columns are just going to come right here. So if you think about it, I have two columns at the start, which are going to be repeating all throughout. And then I have pairs of two columns, the first pair of two columns, the second pair of two columns, the third pair of two columns, so on and so forth. So my technical hard coding in my formula is just to identify, hey, what are the pair of the columns? So pair of two, pair of two, pair of two, so on and so forth. As many as they are, I don't really care. And how many columns do you want to leave apart at the start? So there are two columns that I want to leave apart at the start. And that's literally all that I'm going to hard code. No column names, nothing for that matter. And no matter what kind of data that I have, this is just going to work. Now with that understanding, let's move ahead in Power Query and see how can we build a solution like that. So we start with the source step. And we have all the columns like you would expect, P code country and all the forecasts are right here. And then what I'm going to do is, first of all, I will convert all the columns into individual lists. That means this is going to be a list and this is going to be a list and this is going to be a list and this is going to be a list, so on and so forth. So if you take a look, we have 10 columns right here and I'm going to convert all the 10 columns into 10 lists. And the way to do that is by using a function called table dot two columns. And all of the columns are now converted into a list and there are 10 items right here. This is the first column of the data, second column of the data, so on and so forth. Now, once I've converted everything into a list, at this stage, I want to take a look at how many start columns are going to be repeated. That means the first two columns are going to be repeated, pulled down again and again and again. And then for the rest of the columns, which are three onwards, I want to make pairs of two. That means this is M1 forecast columns, this is M2 forecast columns, M3 forecast columns, and M4 forecast columns right here. And I would want to make pairs of two. Let's just see how can we do that. So if you take a look at the next step right here, I'm using the list.first n function to just pull apart the first two columns, which is the P code and the country name. I'm just keeping it here for just a quick second. In the next step, what I do is I pull apart the first two columns. So I'm saying, hey, the first two 
columns from the entire list. Please skip those. So I'm using the list.skip function. Skip the first two columns and take a look at the rest column. So these are the M1 forecast, M2 forecast, M3 forecast, and M4 forecast, so on and so forth. Now, at this stage, since these two are going to be like one pair of column, I need to convert them into a table and I need to pair these two lists. And I need to pair these two lists, I need to pair these two lists and these two lists, so on and so forth. So there happens to be a very interesting function called list.split. I'm saying, hey, here are the rest of the columns, which are the monthly forecast. Please pair them into, you know, kind of tables of two or lists of two. And if you take a look at the first list here, you will find the M1 forecast, all the lists. And here you will find the M2 forecast, M3 forecast, and M4 forecast. This is now like a list of a list structure. Now, here comes the interesting part. Now, what I want to do is I technically want to form a table with not the M1 forecast right here, but also the two columns that I left at the start. That means, yes, this is the M1 date and this is the M1 value. These two columns are there. But alongside these two columns, I also want the two columns which are right here, which is nothing but the country code and the name of the country. So in the next step, what I do is I actually concatenate the first two, which is right here, the country, as well as the very list, which is the M1 forecasts and convert that into a table. Now, if you actually take a look at the table, you'll understand that all of the M1 forecast are right here and they have been concatenated with the first two which is country and the code and the same thing appears in the second one and the third one so on and so forth if you actually peek into the second one the third one and the fourth one the good thing is that the names of the columns have been adjusted automatically to have standard names like code country date and the value and these are the four tables right here now once I've been able to get these tables which have consistent names all that I do is just combine these four tables and I am good to go so if you take a look at the combined step all the four tables are combined we are good to go we change the type and we are donezo now i'm not suggesting that what i did cannot be done by the ai or not it's just that to be able to prompt at this level your native understanding of power query and how it works and how can you transform the data with different functions is needs to be top notch and that's why you need to invest time in learning and the prompting is automatically going to become easy for you in case you'd like to learn the goodly insider community is open and i'll see you inside <laughs>